Lavia to Arsenal or Liverpool. The race for this splendid young talent heats up. Deals are advancing. Big updates from Ryan Taylor and, of course, the brilliant Fabrizio Romano. We also take a look at the situation with Man United and Hoyland. Fab gives us a big, big update on the scenario surrounding that with rumours of multiple bids being placed for the striker and a big Premier League medical completes today as well. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe right now and click that bell notification button. Let's do this. Fabrizio Romano here updates us on the situation surrounding Lavia. He says here that Liverpool are in the race for Roman Lavia since Monday. And no change despite Slobosly and McAllister in Cummins. Liverpool uh, remain keen on signing Lavia on the list with Turam. Arsenal still very interested, but it uh, depends on Thomas Partey's exit. Southampton won a £50 million fee. Remember from the summer of 2024, City have a 40 million, I believe, million pound buyout clause. So Southampton obviously want to get more than that 40 million pound to make it very much worth their while selling him now rather than maybe in a year's time when the buyout clause come back in. Maybe Man City stop him from going to rivals. It goes to another level this next season. Who knows the way that works? But Liverpool pushing hard for this deal. Fabrizio also quote tweeted a tweet from 15 days ago where he spoke about Liverpool being interested just with a red emoji, the Belgian flag and an arrow pointing towards Liverpool. So it feels as those things are looking as though they could advance in that area in the coming days. Now, in terms of Arsenal's interest, this is an update here from Ryan Taylor, who says that, from what I understand, Arsenal are reluctant to release the £45 million valuation. So slight difference in valuation between Ryan Taylor and Fabrizio Romano, set by Southampton. At the same time, the likes of Liverpool and Chelsea are also in, um, are there. And there has been talks of Manchester United, but I don't know much about United's interest. But I definitely know that Chelsea and Liverpool are interested. What they have, what they have told the player, players' representatives is that they are asking uh, for the price to be lowered, which is kind of normal at this point. So the way Ryan Taylor kind of reports on this is that all of the clubs are trying to get that price down, whether it be 50 or 45 million. We're arguing over not not semantics, but that element of the the conversation isn't overly important. It's the fact they're trying to get the price lowered and Arsenal are involved in that. And that works very well for Arsenal because it means you don't have to panic and bid more than you want to. You can maybe resolve the situation with Granit Xhaka and with Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey, of course, is currently talking to some clubs in Saudi. He's also talking to Juventus. So whether or not he is going to stay or leave remains slightly up in the air at this moment in time. So Arsenal, they can keep pushing for the the price to come down because both Chelsea and Liverpool are both doing that respectively. They're not looking like they're going to put in a, a bid that's going to be accepted as of right now. Now, of course, these reports are now two or three hours old. The world could change by this afternoon and Liverpool submit that £50 million bid. Maybe then Arsenal or Chelsea need to act. They need to move. They need to go and get involved. And that remains to be seen as to whether or not that would be done. But it, we've read so many reports in recent days and weeks that Lavia is up for joining Chelsea, he's up for joining Arsenal, and he's up for joining Liverpool. And a question many fans would ask is, well, how can a player join, agree terms with three clubs? This is very, very normal indeed. Players will often tell multiple clubs, I'm happy with the contract. I'm happy with the squad status. I'm happy with the shirt number. I'm happy with the you know, the job you've offered my dad or the, the, the role you'll give my brother or whatever the overall package may be, the apartment you're going to rent us, the locations, et cetera. These, these are all part of personal terms and they're wide and varied depending upon the player and their individual circumstances. But they can agree personal terms, albeit verbally, with multiple football clubs. Then when the bids come in and... Two of them get two of the three get bids accepted. 
or one gets it accepted or all three get it accepted, they then have a decision to make around which club they are going to join. The race does feel to me like it's advancing now for Lavia. You're getting to a point where the clubs are negotiating on the fee. Typically, that's an advanced stage. Personal terms have been verbally agreed. Otherwise, the clubs wouldn't be negotiating the way they are. If Lavia's people said to Liverpool or Arsenal or Chelsea, we've got no desire to join, they wouldn't be negotiating with Southampton. That's a that's a prerequisite of this situation. So it's one to keep an eye out on. It's one to keep looking at because I think Lavia will be heating up soon. Now, moving on to Manchester United, this is another update from Fabrizio Romano where he says that uh, Rasmus Hoyland remains on Man United's list. The club, the club appreciate him and believe he has huge potential, but want to pay a fair price. The discussion are positive with the, the entourage and the player who is very open to the idea of joining Man United. He also goes on to state, and I want to read this out here, that Man United never made an offer for, um, for Hoyland, as the club are well aware the player is unattainable at 35 million. Atalanta wants 60 to 70 million euros, and that might not even be enough right now. So, of course, this flies in the face of all the rumours last night that a first bid had gone in and a second bid was essentially uh, imminent, if you like. Now, you all know I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Fabrizio Romano and what he reports, but I also won't disregard the, the reports of other journalists. So you have... There are a number of top top quality journalists who last night stated that Manchester United were gearing up a second bid after the initial ones were rejected. Now, from my point of view, I bank all the information. And the reason I say that is this. Fabrizio may not consider an unofficial offer or an offer for an intermediary to be an offer or a bid. Some journalists do not. Me, personally, I think they're all bids. I think if they're... WhatsApp conversations. Uh, do you think 35 plus a player would work? Do you think 35 plus 20 in add-ons would work to an intermediary who then speaks to somebody at the club and comes back and says, no, that won't be enough. I look at all of that as bids, personally. I just think calling them 100 different things really muddies and murkies the water. But I understand club PR. I understand they want things to look a particular way. So we all just kind of get on with it. But it does appear when you read through all the articles, read through all the information, including Fabrizio Romano's, that Man United are advancing this deal. You don't negotiate price. You don't speak to the player's representation. You don't go back to his club directly and hold talks if you're not looking to get a deal done, if the deal is not advancing. The next step is getting the bid accepted. After that, it's medical and paperwork signed. So there's multiple elements have already been done. So it's one to watch out for. But I do want to understand what you will think. How much should Manchester United pay for the player? Leas came up with a great point on the show last night that you drop 100 million euros on this guy, 100 M's. The pressure, the expectation, everything increases exponentially. Is he good enough? Is he ready? Can he handle the pressure of playing for the biggest club in England? The most famous, one of the most famous clubs in the world a club with more media pressure and social media pressure than any other Premier League team. If he comes in at 40, 50 million euros, that pressure is halved instantly. The expectation isn't as high. Or should we, put in a, well, should we be putting a massive amount of expectation on a player who's valued as highly as this? Let me know in the comments section below my people. Now, staying with Manchester United, it has been confirmed today that Mason Mount is undergoing his medical as we speak or as you watch this at Carrington. That should be complete, a formal announcement coming very soon. And because he wasn't part of the international contingent, he will be joining up with his Man United teammates who include Donny van der Beek and Anthony, Lissandro Martinez. They've all returned to pre-season training today, the 3rd of July. Man United's first game, by the way, is in like nine days time. So the Premier, the, the, the Premier League clubs are returning to matches and pre-season is very soon, and it's a highly anticipated preseason with maybe the biggest Premier League season in history ahead of us with so many teams spending big, investing, high expectations, high top-quality managers in the league. It's going to be an amazing campaign. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be an amazing campaign. And make sure you stay with the Terrace this whole time by turning on bell notifications. Also, follow us on TikTok as well right now. Scan that QR code or click on our link in the description below. But the formal announcement of Mason Mount is expected soon. And then what United fans are hoping for is that deals 
for Hoylands, for Onanas, are progressed. And maybe another top of midfield player. And I want to ask the viewers this question now. I don't want unrealistic targets. So don't say Rodri or Declan Rice because they're not going to happen now. Mason Mount's coming in. Who else in midfield that's affordable and attainable do you think Manchester United should go after? I'd love to understand your train of thought surrounding this, please. I've got one, though. Amrabat. £25 million is the reported asking price. I watched him in that Conference League final. Sensational. Watched him during the World Cup. Brilliant. He's had a very good campaign domestically for Fiorentina. Someone like an Amrabat. If not him, Paulinho. Players like that. I, I want a player like that. Me personally. Good on the ball. Great at winning back possession. You know, next to Casemiro, they would be almost impossible to break down. Genuinely almost impossible to break down. How are you getting through that midfield to get towards that defense? That coupled with the goalkeeper that we're, we're hopefully buying? Levels. But I don't want to know what you all think in the, in the comments section below. But until next time, everybody, thank you. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very soon.